which is two and three on yesterday's show. Some nice winners and, well, some bad losers. Still, a 131, 108, and seven overall run here on the show. Still firmly in the black here on Friday. I've got MLB and college football for you. Even a early look ahead to Saturday. Go ahead. Let me know what you think of these selections down below in the comments section. And if you agree, don't be afraid to smash that like button. Here we go. Game five of the NLDS between the Padres and Dodgers tonight. I like you, Darvish. One under two and a half earned runs allowed. And two under four and a half hits allowed. So two plays here. Again, that's under two and a half earned runs allowed for Darvish and under four and a half hits allowed for Darvish. From the Padres' perspective, Darvish obviously is vital uh, towards winning tonight's winner-take-all game in Los Angeles, where it looks like the Dodgers are countering with both their Game 1 and Game 2 starters, Yamamoto and Flaherty. But let's just concentrate on Darvish here. Darvish has good career numbers against Otani, who was just 1-for-8 against him, admittedly a small sample size. Betts, who's 8-for-43 against him. And Hernandez, he of course had the big grand slam earlier in the series. 2-for-12 uh, is Hernandez lifetime against Darvish. Freddie Freeman is 10-for-40 lifetime against Darvish, but remains questionable to play. After missing game four due to injury, manager Dave Roberts has said he expects Freeman back in the lineup tonight. Shortstop Miguel Rojas, on the other hand, injured in game four, seems less likely to play for the Dodgers. So we're talking about a Dodgers lineup probably not at full strength, and Darvish has been very good uh, since returning from the IL in early September. Masterful, uh, you might even say. Two or fewer runs allowed in four of his last five starts. Just three hits allowed each of his last four starts. That includes Game 2 here in L.A., where Darvish went seven innings and gave up just one run. Oh, by the way, San Diego 6-0 with Darvish on the mound since his return from injury. So that's under 2.5 earned runs allowed and under 4.5 hits allowed for Darvish. Two plays for you on tonight's Game 5. Now, for my top MLB bet on this uh, Friday winner-take-all Game 5, head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. Fresh off last night's 3% winner on the Guardians, I'm on an 8-2, and 80% all-sports run to start October with client plays at wagertalk.com. Yes, I know uh, here on the Power 5, the uh, two looks at the totals last night were not very good, but uh, our top plays continue to get it done. Let us now shift to college football, where we've had some success betting team totals here on the Power 5 this week. Uh, not just some success, a lot of success we had. Of course, Jacksonville State over its team total of 38.5 on Tuesday. And then we had Western Kentucky over its team total uh, yesterday. Both of those were winners early in the third quarter. I've got two team totals for you here on the show today for Friday Night Lights. The first is Maryland over 27.5. This is minus 135 at DraftKings. I think it's worth laying a little bit of extra juice here so that all we need is four touchdowns from the Terps. Uh, they're hosting Northwestern on Fox, 8 p.m. Eastern uh, kickoff for this one. The weakness of this Northwestern defense, guys, is against the pass, where they're barely inside the top 100 nationally in success rate and PFF coverage grade. Maryland, they can certainly pass the ball with quarterback Billy Edwards Jr. He threw for three touchdowns against Indiana two weeks ago. Uh, there are injury concerns for Maryland at the wide receiver position, but I don't think that's going to be a huge deal uh, given how Edwards looked in the last game. Maryland also off a bye. Meanwhile, Northwestern did just give up the did just give up 41 to Indiana last weekend. So I think Maryland goes over its team total tonight in Big Ten action. Another team total for you Friday college football is UNLV first half team total over. This is 21 and a half minus 125 at DraftKings. Yes, we're on the wrong side, quote unquote, of 21 here. But I don't think it matters. Rebels should have their way offensively against Utah State tonight especially early on. This offense has not missed a beat since Haj Malik Williams took over from uh, Matthew Sluka. Obviously, that was the big NIL story. Williams has actually been a big upgrade in the passing game, not to mention he's a better runner than Sluka. So I, I don't think, uh, after all that, this has hurt the Rebels one bit. Wide receiver Ricky White the third. he's obviously got a great chemistry with Williams, and this Utah State defense has been absolutely atrocious. In four games versus FBS competition, the Aggies have allowed 48, 38, 45, and 62 points. When it comes to first halves, 
They've allowed 27, 17, 17, and 49 last week to Boise State. Now, the two times it was only 17 allowed in the first half for Utah State, and that's still very bad, mind you. Utah State, they were facing a backup quarterback with Utah and then Temple. So not an outstanding offense there. UNLV is a lot better offensively than those two teams, and they should put up a big point total before halftime in an obvious bounce-back spot after the loss to Syracuse last Friday. The Rebs have scored 100 total points in the two games with Williams at quarterback. I think they get a lot early tonight. Okay, let's close it out today with an early look for Saturday, a noon Eastern time kick. Hold your nose. Make sure you're sitting down because this is ugly. Kent State plus four and a half versus Ball State, a little maction. No one knows the Mac better than me. Both of these teams rated in my bottom five in the country. So this could be the ugliest game of the weekend, a weekend which, of course, has four high-profile matchups led by Ohio State and Oregon. But at the other end of the spectrum, we have Kent State ahead of only Kennesaw State, the FBS newbie in my power ratings. So with all these games on Saturday, including these marquee matchups, why would I decide to bet my hard-earned money on the Golden Flash as well? The idea of Ball State as a road favorite is just absolutely preposterous. The Cardinals are 0-4 versus FBS teams this season. That's straight up. And they've allowed a total of 207 total points in those four games. Now, Kent State down to its third string quarterback, but in his first start two weeks ago versus Eastern Michigan, Tommy Ulatowski came in and he threw for 345 and three touchdowns. It was Kent's highest scoring game of the year, 33 points. As a matter of fact, they almost doubled their point total from the first four games combined. And let's look at the spot. Kent is off a of bye week here. Ball State's playing for a sixth consecutive Saturday. Golden Flashes are in their first ATS win of the season here. I would not be surprised if they pulled the outright upset. All right, let's now recap the Power Five for Friday, shall we? Number one, Hugh Darvish, under two and a half earned runs allowed tonight versus the Dodgers. Number two, Hugh Darvish, under four and a half hits allowed tonight versus the Dodgers. Number three, as we move to college football, Maryland over team total, 27 and a half. Number four, UNLV, First half team total over 21 and a half. And then number five for tomorrow, noon Eastern, Kent State plus four and a half against Ball State. Shop around. Maybe you can even find a better number on that one. You also want to go ahead. Let me know what you think of those selections. Again, down in the comments section below. Don't be shy about dropping your best bets for Friday or the weekend uh, in college football. Again, so many great matchups. I know you guys have opinions on them. I want to know them. Uh, also, if you'd be so kind, I'd appreciate that thumbs up if you haven't already done that. We're giving out free content each and every single day here on Wager Talk TV. The Power 5 is daily. Remember, I'll have an all-college football Saturday edition coming up for you later tonight. You don't even have to wait till the morning. You also want to make sure you are subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Click that bell for instant alerts so you get notified when your favorite shows like this one or the Morning Wager with myself and Mark Zinno drop. Speaking of Mark Zinno, he and I are partnering up this weekend. You can get the next three days of service from both of us for just $69. That's right. Buy one three-day all access, get the other guy free of charge. Mark and I were combined 10 and 1 last Saturday and Sunday. Getting a three-day all access pass ensures you will get all of our college football, NFL, and MLB for the weekend. And if you're not convinced yet, that's a great deal. Check this out. I'm number one in football this season at Wager Talk. With a 29 and 14 combined record in NFL and college, that's 68% and plus 41.1 units. That's in addition to that 8 and 2 all sports record I mentioned earlier to start October. Last weekend, I was a perfect 3 and 0 in college football. I was 2 and 0 in the NFL, including that 5% max bet on Denver. Already locked and loaded with three 4% best bets in college football for Saturday, and I'll have at least two NFL plays for Sunday as well. WT.buzz slash BP. Get that three-day all-access for myself and Mark Zeno for just $69. Every winner from your two favorite handicappers. Great deal there. That does it for the Friday edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, uh, let's catch the tickets.